In this video, I will review my process and give my thoughts on the arbitrage-free bond valuation model. The theory behind the arbitrage-free bond valuation method can be a little confusing. So I will start with the reasoning behind using spot rates to value each individual cash flow of the bond, then touch on the bootstrapping process for extrapolating spot rates and forward rates, explain the arbitrage-free valuation method, and finally apply that method to value a bond with an embedded call option. So in short, to value a callable bond, I extrapolate yields, build an arbitrage-free valuation model for a non-option embedded bond, then apply that model to a callable bond. To start out, let's review why we would want to use different discount rates to value our bond cash flows. In this example, I'm valuing a 10-year bond with a 5% coupon. The simplest way to value the bond would be to discount all of the cash flows with the treasury yield of the same maturity and add a risk premium. In this example, to make things easier, I assume no risk premium. Valuing the cash flows with a single discount rate results in a bond value of $106.70. The issue with that value is that we are applying the discount rate applicable to the cash flow furthest in the investment horizon. In other words, for cash flows a year out, we are applying a discount rate applicable for cash flows 10 years out. Doing so artificially reduces the fair value that we're seeking to calculate. Cash flows that are sooner are less risky than cash flows that are paid later, and the valuation method should reflect that difference in risk. In an ideal world, we would apply the discount rate which corresponds to each cash flow to value our bond. To do so, we want to use treasuries as they are virtually risk-free. There's two problems though. First, there aren't treasuries for every maturity. And second, the treasury yields are calculated based off treasuries which pay coupons as well as the principal, meaning that the yield reflects implied discount rates for the coupons as they are paid, as well as the repayment of the par value. To discount our bond's cash flows, we want to use discount rates which reflect a single cash flow, in this case, a zero coupon bond. That is, I will use the yields on zero coupon bonds to discount my cash flows. To solve the first problem, that is, that there aren't treasuries for every maturity, I extrapolated the remaining par yield using a linear function which isn't the most accurate way to do so, but I think it works well enough for an example. For the second problem, that is that the yields reflect implied yields on coupons as well as repayment of principal instead of a single cash flow at the maturity, I use a process called bootstrapping. I won't delve too deeply into the bootstrapping process because there are numerous resources which will explain the process better than I can. I think it's on the CFA, so there's tons of CFA-related videos on bootstrapping. Effectively, the discount rate for the zero-coupon bond is solved for using forward substitution. You might notice that yields are higher on certain early maturities than later maturities. That's not due to the bootstrapping process. That's due to the fact that I pulled the yields of treasuries from October 21st, 2022, when there was some inversion in the yield curve. Moving on to what's called the arbitrage-free valuation method, which sounds more complicated than it is. There are three steps. First, creating the interest and valuation tree. Second, calibrating the tree by calibrating the interest rates at the lower bound. And third, applying those rates to value the bond. But first, why would I use an arbitrage-free bond method? I could value the bond using these spot rates which I bootstrap without building the interest tree by discounting each cash flow at its respective spot rate, which I've done here in cell J5. As you can see, each cash flow is discounted by the yield for a zero coupon bond which I bootstrap using the par yields, which are the yields from the standard yield curve you might see in the Wall Street Journal. So we know that the fair value for this bond is $106.53 from the MPV analysis, which I conducted in cell J5. 
What the interest rate tree enables us to do is layer in interest volatility and understand what the market is pricing in in terms of upper and lower bounds for interest rates. What's key to understand about the interest rate tree is that it must be calibrated. How do we calibrate it? Since the spot rates are for zero coupon bonds, I put the $100 par value in each period and solve for the lower bound, which would result in the correct present value. I did that for periods 1 through 10. Of course, as the tree gets wider and wider, the lower bound decreases and the upper bound increases. In effect, as I project further and further into the future, the range of possibilities related to interest rates increases. So I know that the interest rate tree that I built works and is accurate because the present value of both the tree and the MPV analysis in cell J5 are equal to each other. Moving on to the callable bond. In this case, I'm assuming that the bond issuer has the option to recall the bond starting in period 12 or year 6 at a price of $110. A bond issuer might recall their bond when interest rates have lowered to the point where retiring the old debt and issuing new debt would be cost effective. That means that once yields have dropped to the point where the bond value is greater than $110, the bond will be recalled. Therefore, it follows that bondholders will never receive more than $110 in value from the bond, as once the bond's value reaches over $110, the bond issuer will recall the bond. To reflect the ability and likelihood of the bond issuer recalling the bond at $110, I added this min function with the calculated present value, excuse me, taking the minimum of the calculated present value and $110. What this min function does is limit the present value to $110, reducing the net present value of the bond overall. Using the arbitrage-free framework, the model results in a bond value of $105.85. Since I know that the non-callable bond's value is $106.52, subtracting the callable bond's value from the non-callable bond's value results in an option value of $0.68. Cents. So that is how to value a callable bond. Thanks for watching.